Okay, so on this series of the PM1 software, we're going to show how you would create a file that then you can use your EEPROM router to create an EEPROM. So here we're going to do a new program here. And the model machine that uses EEPROMs is going to be an LK, the old style 1900, or which is here, or the 1910 and 20 series. So we're just going to use a 1920. Okay, and we're going to do, for this particular application, we're going to do a three-quarter by three-quarter box and cross. So it's basically the same procedure as before, polygon input, keyboard input here, 0, 9.5, 9.5, 9 9.5, and continue going until we get box and cross. And here we're, we're going to do superimposed lines parallel right on top of each other. Okay, so that's the outline of the box. That's using configuration data. And now we hit this icon here. We're going to do normal stitching. I'm left clicking here, then right clicking. And that's my stitch length. And that's what we've got here. So we're going to view this. Okay, so now we need to save this thing and then get it into the setup for the EEPROM burner. So on the condition setting, setting device, here's where I store everything here in this particular. I have a, I set up a folder, so I'm going to set up this folder here. I can name it. In, in this case, I'm going to just put this customer's name down here. Customer. You can name it whatever you want. And when I hit OK, and then when I go to save this to output, it's going to save it in this file type. It's the only option you have, and then you can change what pattern number you want. And once you have that. It's going to ask for the thread trimming, and then it's going to store the pattern. It's going to create the directory for you. Okay, now if you want to see where that is, I look for that folder. And I should have one that says customer. And that's here. And then you have it. This is the folder. This was created by the PM1. That is the file you will take. And with your EEPROM burner software, you will take that file and send it to the EEPROM. Make sure it's in Intel hex format. And that's how you would burn an EEPROM.